Hello, I'm Laura Cassidy from the American Chemical Society. Welcome to this news briefing from the ACS Fall 2019 National Meeting in San Diego. We're joined today by Dr. Paula T. Hammond and Yan Pu He from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. They're studying a skin patch that could painlessly deliver vaccines and cancer medications in one minute. Dr. Hammond? Yes, I'm very excited about this technology that we've been developing in our lab. Uh, the reason that we're interested in using microneedles is because they can actually replace the more traditional syringe, which uh, of course is uh, going to cause pain, but can also pass on infections and has a number of other problems, which make it much less uh, portable and much less usable. Uh, we're actually using microneedles, uh, an array of tiny needles uh, that is incredibly small. The array itself, it can be as small as a centimeter or larger, and the needles are actually fractions of a millimeter. These tiny needles can penetrate the skin, but they don't penetrate deep enough to reach the blood vessels or nerves, and for that reason they don't cause pain, and they also don't allow transmission of disease through the bloodstream. Now, what we've been doing is actually creating a nanoscale coating on these microneedles. And the way that we can do this is using electrostatics. We can take positively and negatively charged species and alternately adsorb them from water to create an extremely thin film. And in this case, the things that we want to incorporate into the film are our charged materials. And they include proteins that carry charge. And these proteins can act as antigens for vaccines. And this is what we're incorporating for a number of our vaccine-containing systems. But it can also contain nucleic acids. And those nucleic acids, for example, could be DNA, which encodes for the antigen. We can also incorporate a number of molecules that can excite or advance the immune response further. And the idea of this work is that we'd like to be able to generate these extremely thin solid films on a microneedle array, transplant that thin film into the skin, and then rapidly remove the uh, solid part of the array. What's left behind is a thin film that can release over time. But one of the issues here is that we'd like to be able to rapidly release this vaccine so that it can then reside in the skin for a long period of time and release over extended time periods without disrupting or disturbing the skin. That way we can get a much more advanced immune response. I'm going to turn things over to my graduate student, Yan Pu He, to continue to describe the technology. Um, okay, so I will quickly uh, go over the mechanism of how our technology works. So as we load uh, our drug onto the microneedle, as Paula explained, using the layer-by-layer -layer electrostatic assembly, um, every adjacent layers carry opposite charge and they attract to each other. Uh, this is necessary to have a stable and robust film during the microneedle's construction and storage, but it also poses a challenge when we want to actually apply our microneedle to the skin and release the drug film into the epidermis uh, because the drug film will stick to the microneedle surface. So to solve this problem uh, with my colleague Celestine Holm, we synthesized a polymeric material originally uh, positively charged to be placed in between the microneedle surface and the LBL drug film. So this polymer is designed to be pH sensitive in that once it's on the skin, it will invert its charge to negatively charged. So right now you can imagine um, it's opposing instead of attracting its neighboring uh, layers and that pushes the drug film rapidly into the skin, which will start a sustained release uh, of a melanoma antigen, uh, which will trigger a, a tumor-specific uh, immune attack, also with a um, adjuvant, which is a double-stranded RNA that will uh, activate the immune cells to do the job. Thank you. Are there any questions? Please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. <clears throat> Katie Cottingham from the American Chemical Society. So um, would this be for delivering vaccines or would this be for delivering treatments for diseases? Actually, this can be designed to deliver any kind of 
drug molecules that can be incorporated into the thin film. And our original focus has been on vaccines against infectious disease, but now we've moved toward uh, a very strong interest in delivery of vaccines for cancer. Uh, it has much of the same theme in that we want to incorporate an antigen, this time an antigen that is characteristic of something that the tumor cell produces, along with other molecules that can stimulate the uh, immune cells that are really going to aggressively attack that tumor. Uh, so this is where our focus is now. We believe this can be very effective for melanoma. Is there, uh, Sophie Rovner with the American Chemical Society, is there any pain or sensation associated with using these microneedles? Um, so uh, this might actually no, uh, because the microneedle length is designed to be around 500 to 600 microns, and this length only penetrates the stratum corneum layer of the skin and does not touch the dermal layer of the skin, which has blood vessels and nerves, so this is a pain-free application. And given that it's administrating the drug at such a shallow depth, is there any likelihood that the drug could wash off or brush off? Or? Well, that's one of the uh, things that I think is unique about this approach. Uh, the nanomaterial system that we create in this assembled layer is a very stable layer in terms of uh, uh, its resistance to friction and so forth. And we're embedding it deeply into the skin, deeply enough that it really is uh, within layers that are going to allow access to the immune cells. And it turns out that our skin contains a large density of, of immune cells in those upper layers. So it's a wonderful target for any kind of immune treatment. However, uh, it's not going to uh, be susceptible to anything that would be on the, on the surface of the stratum corneum. All right, thank you. Bela Buslik, uh, ACS. Uh, is there a size limitation on, uh, on, on this uh, patch? Uh, since melanomas uh, can be any kind of si uh, sizes, do you custom uh, size the, uh, the, the system and how do, do you adjust the, the quantities injected? Um, so that's a great question. Uh, in fact, we can um, make microneedles of any size. Um, so for these microneedles, we make them out of a silicone mold. But if you want like a bigger one, you can definitely do 3D printing. Uh, you can make like arbitrary areas of the microneedle. And as for drug loading per microneedle, it can be easily controlled by the number of cycles we do the layer by layer uh, dipping of our drug. So if you want more drugs, you can simply coat the uh, drug film to be more thicker with more layers uh, coated on top of it. Now is this uh, patch uh, supposed to be self-administered? Like, like you, you basically get uh, get a prescription, get some, uh, get some, place, place it on your skin yourself, or uh, or do you really have to go to uh, to, uh, to a medical office to, uh, to to for the doctor or, or nurse to administer it? You would still need to work with a clinician of some kind, um, but it makes it much more accessible to clinics of many different sizes. Uh, and one of the things we're excited about is the fact that you would be able to ship these um, from a number of different places under a number of different conditions and maintain the stability of the contents of the vaccine, uh, which means that we would be able to deploy these uh, for anti-cancer anti treatments in a number of different countries without concern. Thank you. Katie Cottingham, ACS again. Um, so when do you think this would be tested in humans? Yes, uh, right now this is a, a bit of a road because we need to first uh, examine the efficacy against melanoma in small animals. We're looking at mice. Uh, if those are successful, we'll work with collaborators, and including uh, uh, Daryl Irvin, whom we work with at MIT and others, to see if we can get a trial in primates, which would be the next target. Typically, uh, that tends to take 
relatively long periods of time because we're talking about uh, not only getting the approval to work with, with primates, but um, the time frames for delivery of the vaccine. So I anticipate that uh, if things went uh, without any uh, obstruction, that we would be able to look at this in three or four years. Okay. Thanks. Um, and do you have plans to uh, develop this, uh, the vaccines for other diseases in the future? We're very interested in other diseases. Uh, there are possibilities of developing the same kinds of technology to address vaccines against, for example, dengue or uh, malaria or other kinds of disease. Uh, one of the things that's nice is that we can change the content of the layers at will. Uh, this is an assembly process that can allow precision engineering of the vaccine itself. What that means is that once we understand what protein or what nucleic acid we think will be effective, we can incorporate that and generate a new vaccine. For that reason, this is also something that's interesting for addressing infectious diseases that are um, uh, discovered and uh, need to be addressed in a very rapid fashion. And we think it also is interesting for uh, addressing diseases that we know a little bit more about, such as HIV, um, if we can ultimately understand the correct proteins to incorporate. I have a question. Um, how quickly does the patch release the medication? Is it pretty much instantaneous, or do you need to leave it on the skin for a period of time? Um, that's a great question. So we, our, for our uh, microneedle, we only need one minute of uh, pressing this microneedle to the skin. Uh, but before we develop this technology, uh, previous uh, methods all require of around 15 minutes to even 90 minutes of application because their methods, depending on uh, reducing the charge on the, on the base layer or increasing the solubility of the base layer, which is very diffusion dependent in terms of uh, waiting for the drug film to detach from the microneedle surface, but the, they, they remain the layer by layer film to stick to each other. They do not change the nature of this positive, negative, alternating uh, pattern, whereas we change this attractive force to a repelling force. So our, uh, uh, our application time required is just one minute. Yeah, much shorter than a typical tattoo. <laughs> Are there any other questions? All right, thank you. The archive version of this session will soon be posted at bit.ly slash ACS 2019 San Diego. Please join us for our next press conference at 3 p.m. today on how diabetes can increase.